Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'm going to be showing you all about port forwarding and while this tutorial is part of my Game Maker playlist, it's not in any way exclusive to Game Maker. Port forwarding is port forwarding and if you're just interested in how to port forward, hang around and I'll get to that. So here we've got on the screen a basic diagram of the situation you're sitting at right now. You've got an internet right at the top and you've got your local area network which comprises of a router and several computers. The basic purpose of your router is to route traffic from the internet to the specific computer that requests it. So as you can see here, you have your external IP, which is given to you by your ISP. Then every computer has a local IP right over there. So in order to do port forwarding, you will need to know your local IP. This is the IP that your router gives to every computer um, on the network. This IP changes whenever the router is maybe switched off or it expires every 24 hours or so. It's got a specific amount of time and it changes frequently. Your external IP address also changes, but not as frequently as your local IP address. If you want a static IP address, you'd have to contact your ISP and organize some sort of arrangement. If you want to set up a, a local static IP address, I can show you how to do that later on. So basically, when you port forward, what you're doing is you're telling your router to uh, route all traffic coming from that specific port to a specific IP address, specific local computer. So in game maker terms, if we go over here to our client and server, over here, in the client create, we have this bit of code called address equals get string. Um, and here we're getting the address, and this is pretty much the server's IP address. And here we are getting the port. Now going back to the diagram over here, there are several situations you will find yourself in when trying to connect to a server. The easier situation is the client and server are both in the same local area network. So if PC3 was the server and PC1 was the client, in order to connect to the server, all we'd have to do is supply uh, the client with the server's IP address, this local IP address, 192.168.1.3. And just like that, we'd be able to connect to the server, the easiest of all the situations. Then we've got a different situation where the client is somewhere along the internet, on the other side of the world, and the server is behind a router. So if again, PC number three is the server with 192.168.1.3, and the client is somewhere on the other side of the world of the internet, in order to connect to the server, the client on the other side of the internet would have to connect to the external IP address of the network, right over here, this would be 91.176.219.58. Then that connection would come to the router and then it's the router's job to forward the port supplied with that IP address to the server, PC3, right over there. So it'll connect to the network, come to the router, the router says all um, traffic from that port should be routed to PC3, which in this case is the server. Those are the two main situations that you'll be dealing with. The first situation does not require port forwarding anyway, so if you're creating a game that's just going to run on a local network, as long as you know your local IP address that the router gives the server, that's all fine. You just enter that IP address and you're good to go. If you're going to do situation two, so you're going to hold a dedicated server for your game or application or whatnot, and it's going to be on the other side of the internet of the world somewhere, and people from around the world are going to connect to you, you're going to need to know your external IP address, you need to um, create a port, you need to forward that port to the local IP address of your server, right over there. So, now you're probably wondering, well, how do you get all these numbers? To get your external IP address, it's as simple as going into Google and typing in what's my IP, just like that. It'll say your public IP address is, and then there'll be two digits over here, followed by a further two. I've covered these up while this is a demonstration. I really don't want people messing around with my IP. So you'll get a number, something, 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 and that is known as your external IP address. This IP address will change periodically. It's not as frequent as the local IP address change, but you know, every now and then if you go check out what's your IP, it'll, it'll be something different. So once we've got that, that is this one at the top. That's your external IP address. Then you've got your internal IP addresses. These are given to you by your router whenever you plug in a new computer to your router or the router resets or something, or every 24 hours that changes. Now, in order to find your internal IP address, it's simple as going to start typing in CMD, bring up a command prompt like this, type IP config, like that, enter. Bring up a lot of data, scroll to the top, you're basically looking for IPv4 address, right over here. IPv4 address 192.168.1.3. So my router is giving me this local address. So if I was on a, well, if I was on the same local area network as my server, and perhaps another computer was the client, and this computer that I'm working on now is the server, 
in order for that client to connect to me, the server, he would just have to enter this 192.168.13 number. And it doesn't matter what port he gives because it will always connect being on the same local network. So now that once we've got to the external IP and we've got our internal IP, you're ready for both situations. So the local situation of being on the same network, that's pretty much straightforward. We just enter the local IP address of the server and we can connect to it. So that's what you do right over here. Address equals, this will prompt the user for an address. The user will enter 192.168 and then there was 13, was it? Yep. So now you're probably wondering, well, if the person's on the other side of the internet, he would have to enter this 91.176.219.58 into this part over here. And then we need to now port forward. We need to forward that port to say that once we're getting a connection from that external IP, from the other side of the world, the router needs to know that this needs to go to the PC, the server, with 192.168.13. So to do that, we are going to open up a browser just like this. You're going to type in the IP address of your router. Every router has a default IP address. Um, you're going to have to Google the make or the manufacturer of your router and find out what it is. But in this case, I've got a D-Link, so it's 192.168.11. Push enter. It'll prompt you for a username and password. There we go. After you log in, you'll get some sort of screen. I can't exactly give you um, the screen that you will find on yours. Everyone is different. Give you some basic information. Um, stuff like that and it'll give you your actual IPv4 address of your router in this case is 192.168.11. What you're going to need to do now is go into advanced setup. Now that you're in your advanced setup you need to find your NAT, virtual service setup. Virtual server allows you to direct incoming traffic from WAN side and then by, pro by protocol and external port to the internal server with IP address on the LAN side. This internal port is required only if the external port needs to be converted to a different port number blah de, blah de, blah de, blah. Now Safe ports, I'd suggest anything between the range of uh, 49,152 through 65,535. Anything between there is fine. So in order to port forward, you're going to click Add right over there. It'll bring up something like this. Now notice if you, collect, if you click Select one over here, check this out. There's a whole lot of games that all require dedicated servers sometimes. And if you click on one of these just for the fun, let's see, there's Age of Empires awesome that one it's got a whole lot of ports here that this game would use now if you were setting up a server you could do that click save and there you go so in our case we are setting up a custom um, a custom port to forward so we're gonna, we're gonna click custom server we're gonna type in something here for example I'm gonna say this is my game Ugh, my game then here server IP address here we put the local IP address go back to our diagram of the server, in this case, is 192.168.13, right over there, 13. Then we're going to select an external port, again, between the ranges of 49.152 through 265.535, so if you say 50,000, 50,000, that's a good one. So we're starting at 50,000, we're ending at 50,000, so it's only that port. TCP, you can either have it as UDP, TCP, or TCP, UDP. You know, just select TCP, UDP, or both. If you're making a game or you've got an application, it's always good to allow UDP and TCP so you can use both of those protocols at the same time. Then there we go. Internal automatically has all that. Don't worry about remote IP. And all you got to do is click save slash apply. Just like that. Now it says that in my NAT here, I've got my game, that's the name of my server, just so that I can see that this port is for my game. If I was to come into you at a later stage and I had somehow lost my memory, this will give me some sort of tag to tell me what exactly this port is for. And here we've got 50,000, we've got 50,000, showing that it's for both protocols, and it ends at 50,000 also. And then here it's routing to the IP address there. So when the router gets information coming from the internet and it hits the router's well, my external IP of 91.176.219.58. The router is going to accept that connect that connection, and it's going to say, "Well, where do I send it? I'm sending it to PC3, right over there. That port 50,000 goes to PC3, not PC2, not PC1. These other PCs have no idea that this connection is incoming and these packets are being received. Just like that. Easy. It's pretty simple. Now, as I said before, coming back to this diagram once more, these IP addresses." Are dynamic. They change all the time depending on if your router gets switched off. Every 24 hours they change. Your ISP gives you another random external IP address randomly. This all happens. And the problem is that if you're having a game server and it is open to the public, 
this external IP or your local IP address is going to change all the time. So in order to make your external IP address static, you'd have to organize that with your ISP. There's probably um, different premiums you've got to pay or whatnot to get a static IP. But when it comes to internal IP address, you can easily make this internal IP address static. So whenever your router is reset or your computer is unplugged and plugged back in, it'll always give the computer that you tell it to the IP address of 192.168.1.3. So that whenever we're coming in from an external IP address, we're always forwarding to this PC3. And to do that, you can either go into your command prompt, type in IP config forward slash all, get all the information and plug that in. But there are some programs on the internet that do it all for you. So in order to do this, we're going to go back to our browser. We no longer need our router. We can just close that. We're going to go to a little site called portforward.com forward slash help forward slash setup static IP address uh, dot htm. And basically, they've got a free software to set up a static IP address. It's very, very user friendly. Um, just go yeah to that. Go to that link. It's in the description. Download the network utilities bundle. It'll have a whole lot of other utilities. But basically, you're looking for the port forward setup static IP address one. And here it shows you how to do it all, but I'm going to go through that with you right now. So once it's downloaded and installed, just launch it. It gives you some information. Um, it says the IP address is currently dynamic. There it is, 13, 192.168.13. I'm going to click Make It Static. On the right here, it'll show you that these IP addresses in this list are all taken. Following IP addresses are not available because they are in use by network by the devices. Here it says my current IP is 192.168.13. But it, rec it recommends that I should change it to 192.168.1.150. Basically, when you plug in a device to your router, it's going to increment this last digit by 1. So 192.168.1.3, plug in another computer, it's going to be 14.567. So it's recommending that I go all the way up to 150 so that I can have like 149 other devices plugged in magically. And it should be fine. So I suggest you leave these all as recommended. So set it as static to the recommended value. I mean, you can also say uh, current value, so I can make it 1.3, um, or I can enter my own kind of IP address there, but I'm going to leave it as recommended, because 1, 150, that's, that's pretty good. Leave all these things the same, and then all you do is click Apply. It's going to come up with this saying, warning, we're about to change the network settings. This will cause the internet connection to briefly drop. Any active downloads connections may be interrupted, blah, 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 blah. Um, Windows may ask you for permission. That's all good. Click Apply. It's going to ask you for permission. Say yes. It's coming up with this. It's saying that it's all good. Don't click anything. Just let it do it. Bam. Just like that, it now says that this IP address is currently static. It's giving us the 192.168.1.150. And now we can exit this. If we go back into CMD, over here, CMD, we're going to type in IP config like that scroll back up notice now our IPv4 address is 192.168.1.150 just like that so if I were to go to the diagram over here my external IP address is still that value I found in typing in what's my IP into Google that is the same then here down over here it's now going to have PC3 internal IP address is 192.168.1.150 when it asks me to connect to a server if I'm on the same local area network as the server, so if PC1 was the client and PC3 was the server, PC1's client would say, connect to what? And I put in 192.168.1.150, and then there you go, you'll be able to connect to the server very easily. And because it's static, as long as we are on the same network, we can always you know, enter that IP address, 1150, and we'll always connect to the server. If we were now coming in externally from an internet, for example, we'd enter the external IP address of the network given to the server by the ISP. Then we'd enter the port. In this case, it was 50,000. The router would take that external IP address and that router and say, go to PC3, which is 192.168.1.150. So basically, it's just a like a, a controller. It says that if I'm getting a connection from from my external IP address on that specific port, then I know that it needs to come to PC3 and not any of the other PCs. So that is port forwarding in a nutshell. Just remember, when you're forwarding a port, um, it's always good to make sure that the port you're forwarding is not reserved in any way. That's why I suggest anything from 49, 152 through to 65, 535. I use 50,000 a lot for my things, my testing and whatnot. So you can too, I guess. So we can now test this out by going back to our game over here. 
and it's going to prompt us for some settings. So we're going to start our server. Wait for that to start up. Okay, server started. Start our client. As soon as the start, it's going to ask us for some details. But one thing we better do go back actually into our object controller. Remember, we are porting port 50,000. So this is just going to say, worry about delay client. I'm not going to say anything about that. I'm going to say port equals 50,000 because that's the one we forwarded. Now, because we're on the same network, here's the server. I'm actually running on the exact same system. Uh, it wouldn't matter. So here, that's why I'm using the loopback. Uh, but if I was on another server from around the world, I'd have to input the external IP address into this prompt when it comes up. Play right over here. So it's saying enter the an address um, because this is the same computer. I'm doing a loopback 127.0.0.1. If I was somewhere else on the same local aeronetic, I'll do 192.168.1.150. See that? And if I were around the world somewhere, halfway around the world, I would enter 91.176.219.58 if that were the external IP address of the network connected to the server. Just like that. So now that you've got all that information going, it's going to be easy um, for you to. Oh yeah, <laughs> this happens when you don't provide correct information. It's going to be easy for you to carry on with the next few tutorials where we're going to um, just send some variables and whatnot. So now that port forwarding is sorted, you have a basic understanding of what it's all about. We can proceed with the rest of the HTTP DLL2 tutorials. And if you're a random viewer from across the internet who just wanted to check this out for port forwarding, I hope you have found out what's what. Again, if you go to that website, portforward.com, it's got a whole lot of um, of different t uh, tutorials and documentation you can read depending on your specific router. So if you're a little lost, I mean, my one is pretty straightforward going to that NAT section. Your one might be under like a games and applications kind of subcategory. And whatnot. You're going to have to do a little digging because I can't exactly give you the specifics for your router. And again, making your local IP address static is a great way if you're hosting a server that you don't want your router to dynamically change your IP address and everything that can cause some problems. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. I look forward to your feedback and suggestions. If you're feeling generous, feel free to send a few bucks, buy me a beer or coffee sometime. Links to everything I've discussed are in the description below. And in the very next tutorial, the one after this one, I am going to be sending a custom variable through the server and the client. So we're going to make our own little message, show you how to do that. And once you understand that, we're going to head on to the more advanced topics such as account registration and management. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.